with researchers from more than 80 countries spending a decade exploring waters from the poles to the tropics, from the coast to the deep ocean. They say it's one of the largest scientific collaborations ever carried out. We've at least doubled, I think, our knowledge, if not trebled our knowledge, um, of understanding the oceans. Um, and I think it's an exponential curve uh, going upwards, where the curve goes up like this. Um, and I think the important thing is also it's the blue touch paper of interest in the oceans, and that will continue, I think, for many decades to come. This project off Western Australia looked at one of the most complex marine ecosystems, coral reefs. During the census, scientists found between a third and a half of soft corals in the area were new species, just one of the fresh discoveries that's given marine biologists a new baseline for future work. So far, scientists believe they've identified around a quarter of a million different marine species, and this census has been a giant stock take of what lives where in the world's oceans. But there is still much more to be discovered. For every species listed, there could be another three that are as yet unknown. And while that leaves big gaps in scientific knowledge, the census should help protect what is there. Not only do we understand more about individual species, but we understand how they relate to one another. And that's incredibly important as far as conservation is concerned, because we need to understand how these creatures interact and also the effect they have on other parts of the ocean. The census won't continue in its current form, but researchers will be adding to the database of known marine species. Daniel Bircher, BBC News. And there is uh, much more about all of that on the BBC News website. Let's take a look at the weather prospects right now. Here's Thomas. Hi there. Well, it's, uh, it's autumn outside, isn't it? The leaves are blowing. We've had some rain as well. But actually, some of us today will uh, have a fairly decent day. There'll be some blue sky with some fluffy clouds as well, but certainly not for everybody. Uh, the picture, for example, across the southeast, uh, the Midlands and the southeast through this morning has been a very murky and a rainy one, and it looks as though the clouds here to stay for quite some time. Other areas of the country, however, like the southwest, Wales, many parts of northern England, much of Scotland here, some very nice weather to come through this afternoon. Uh, pleasant sunshine but rain is again on the way I'll show you where the rain goes in just a second but first of all let's uh, have a look at the good weather then so lots of sunshine across central eastern and southern Scotland similar weather conditions across most of northern England but by the time we get to Lincolnshire East Anglia and the London area here it's still cloudy it's drizzly it's basically the leftover of all of that rain we've ha we've been having for the last day or so very little wind to push that that cloud away in the southwest of the country, the rain has gone through. So here we have uh, plenty of fine weather, temperatures of around 17 degrees or so, 16 Celsius in Cardiff, light winds as well. And then the winds freshen as we head towards northern Britain in advance of this next dose of weather, rain coming our way. So it looks as though it's a wet second half of the day in Northern Ireland. The rain will also reach the Western Isles and you can see the arrows here. So indicating some strong winds. In fact, gale force winds in the Western Isles of Scotland, gusts of 55 miles an hour. But the winds will blow through. The rain will blow through as well or sweep through rather. And then we're left with a, a, a murky night, quite a warm night for some of us, actually double figure temperatures for most of us. Blustery, though, with showers across northwestern parts of the UK through tonight. And then tomorrow it stays blustery with showers across northwestern parts of the country and the west as well. The Midlands might get some sunshine, but again in the southeast we've got a, a lump of rain coming our way. So again, Portsmouth to London should see some rain through the course of the afternoon, but later on in the day tomorrow that rain should fizzle away. So some late sunshine on the cards even for the southeast. Wednesday, we've got to do it all over again. More rain coming in for the southeast. Some sunshine across western areas, the northwest of the country, blustery with showers and temperatures, not bad.
An end to child benefit for all. Higher rate taxpayers will lose out from 2013. The change will affect more than a million families. The Chancellor says it's a big decision, but necessary. We've got to be tough, but fair. And that's why we will withdraw child benefit from households with a higher rate taxpayer. And I'm live at the Conservative Party conference where we'll be getting reaction to the Chancellor's announcement and speaking to one of his Treasury ministers. Under attack, four NATO convoys have been attacked in Pakistan in four days. Testing times, the biggest changes to the driving test in 75 years come into force today. And finally underway, the first full day of the Commonwealth Games, but who's watching them? A nail-biting finish to the Ryder Cup as America's golfers fight back against Europe. And coming up in the sport, more from the Commonwealth Games, where Jazz Carlin becomes only the fourth Welsh woman to win a medal in the pool. She won silver in the 200 metres freestyle, ahead of Rebecca Adlington. Good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. Child benefit is to be scrapped for higher rate taxpayers from 2013. The Chancellor, George Osborne, said the move would save around a billion pounds a year and would affect all parents earning over about £44,000 a year. He also announced there will be a limit on the total amount of benefits any one family can receive. He's been outlining the details at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham. John Sopel is there for us. John. Louise, thank you. In the great scheme of things, a billion pounds may not seem like a huge sum of money given the hole in the nation's finances. But child benefit has been sacrosanct until now, a universal benefit that isn't means tested. And though the change won't happen until 2013, it will throw up anomalies. Here's our political correspondent, Ben Wright. He knows that his cuts will be controversial. And this morning, the Chancellor strode into the conference centre with news that will hit the wallets of many of his party's members. We are going to withdraw child benefit from higher rates taxpayers. Uh, it's a big decision for us, but we think it's absolutely necessary and fair given the financial situation we face. Compare that to this, his message to last year's conference. We will preserve child benefit, winter fuel payments and free TV licences. They are valued by millions. The decision will save the Treasury £1 billion a year and means that from 2013, if either parent earns more than £44,000, the family will lose all child benefit. But if both parents each earn less than that amount, they keep the benefit, even if their income adds up to more than the higher rate. The change will mean that 1.2 million families will lose child benefit, but more than 6 million will be unaffected. Family allowances were first introduced in 1946. The current child benefit system was phased in in the late 70s and provides a payment for each child in a family until the age of 19 if they're in education. The decision to halt child benefit payments to better off families will affect some of the mums at this leafy Birmingham primary school. I do feel if they need to make cutbacks, then at the end of the day, they have to start with the people who are earning the money. They don't need it. We would definitely miss it, I think. It's, it's always useful to have the things that crop up with the school during the week, school meals and things that need paying. Yeah, it will affect us, but I think in, you know, in the real world, if you've got to cut something, that's probably a fair assessment. I think it should be on the combined income of the household, not, not the highest earner. Um, I don't work, and that's a, that's a choice that I make. George Osborne said that the child benefit decision was a one-off measure, tough but fair. But some are worried that it's only the start. Our fear, and it's not a fear that's gone, is that there'll be further reductions to child benefit and it will be taken away for children who are perhaps older than 14 or older than 13. That would be catastrophic.